And so as we bring back our, our dear friend and the Reverend Pam, Pamela Chapel. Pamela is a singer, songwriter, spiritual teacher, and amateur genealogist ordained in the International Metaphysical Ministry. And after serving as an educator for over 35 years and earned her doctorate from the University of Sedona, uh, she is uh, well-read, enlightened, and uh, ready to share her words of wisdom, wisdom with us as well. Author of For Pete's Sake, talking about her husband, Pete. He'll, he's waiting in the wings with a Coptic moment as well. And we look forward to his topic that she, uh, he will share with us with uh, Master Ahmed Bey's works. And also a spiritual bucket list is Pam's talk tonight. So we welcome her. Uh, before I begin, could we have Michael come back on? Can we get your image back one more time, Michael? Yeah. Because I want those two images of John to be uh -huh. right there. Uh -huh. you, you see the joy on his face. You see the smile. Yeah. And you know that in the afterlife, he is going to be very happy about the life he had on this planet. Don't you think? I mean, what an amazing thought. Yeah, very much so. Okay, thank you very much, Michael. You're um, You know, I would like to, I wish tonight we could just sit around in a circle because it feels kind of awkward. You know, we're in these little boxes on the screen, but we'll try to imagine that we are in the same room just having a conversation tonight. I don't want this to be a lecture. I just wanted to uh, have... You guys think for a bit about the concept of bucket list. That may come in your mind from time to time, but let's just kind of visit that this evening. Um, <clears throat> oh, a month or two, Pete and I watched the movie Bucket List uh, with Jack Nicholson and Morgan Freeman. It was made in 2007. And if you've seen it, you know, it was, it's a delightful movie. It is about these two fellas who are about as different as you could possibly be, winding up in the same hospital room and discovering at about the same time that they have terminal illness and they're not going to be living very much longer. Yeah. So uh, in a roundabout way, they come up with this list of things they'd like to do or uh, see, do, or be experienced before uh, they leave this planet. <clears throat> So they did. And, and I, I love the movie. If you haven't seen, I, seen it, I hope you get a chance to. It is on Netflix and it's called Bucket List. <clears throat> now, I had a bucket list. <clears throat> you know, every little child who is asked, what do you want to do when you grow up has a bucket list, <clears throat> right? And the, the things on it might, might change over time. For example, when I was a little girl, I used to come home from school and sometimes I'd catch those old post-World War II movies, you know, where the the uh, soldiers were home on leave and they'd go to these fancy nightclubs and the men would be wearing dinner jackets and the women would be wearing these long flowing gowns. And there would always be a band and there would be a female vocalist. And she'd be up there in her long, what, red slinky gown singing. And it, I just huh. That's what I wanted to do when I grew up. I wanted to be a lounge singer. <laughs> and the funny thing is, I actually had a chance to do that in my 40s. I sang with a jazz trio, and, and we did that. So it was really fun, and I'm glad I could do that sometime in my life. Another thing I wanted to do, I've always wanted to do, was travel. And when I was much younger, I, would, I wanted to travel everywhere. I wanted to go everywhere. In fact, when I was in college, I saw a poster on a bulletin board that said seminar on Guatemala. And it was inviting students to be part of this National Science Foundation grant to introduce students to original research. And it involved a month of study, a couple of months in Guatemala, and then a month uh, following up with papers that we wrote. <clears throat> but the thing is, I was not in the social sciences. It was a social science thing. You know, we had our we had our geographers, we had our archaeologists, our anthropologists, and so forth. And I didn't have any of that. I was in elementary education and Spanish, but they took me because I was fluent in Spanish and they needed somebody who could help them. So I did that. So those are two things I got to do. The third one was much more recent. I always wanted to go on a hot air balloon ride. And I'm just so excited that we got to do that when we were in Egypt and the and the hot air balloon was right over the Isis temple. It was, it, that was just such a wonderful experience for me. 
Now, I have a fourth thing on my bucket list that um, I'm kind of questioning whether I need to negotiate with that. All my life, I have wanted to go to Machu Picchu in Peru. That's that's. In fact, I've never been to South America, even though I spent eight years studying Spanish. I've I've been to Latin America, but not South America. So that's something I'd like to do. But I'm a little concerned about the the altitude and people who have trouble altitude sickness and all that and breathing and that kind of thing. I'm not sure at my age that that's a real good idea, but I haven't taken it off the list altogether yet. Now. I wanted to ask you, before we talk about a spiritual bucket list, what are some of the things that you might have on a bucket list, or if you had one, if you don't? And that this is where I'd like to kind of open it up. Who who has something that they want to do in their bucket list? <clears throat> and I will wait until somebody says something. <clears throat> Lori, I know you want to say something. I can just see it on your face. <laughs> mean me? Yes. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> well, actually, I was what I was actually thinking was I'm, I'm 81 now. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. I, I know I've, I've got a good friend who wants to go on a uh, barge cruise on one of the river cruises. Mm -hmm. And she lives out in California or uh, actually, no, she lives in uh, Portland, Oregon. And uh, but now she's talking about a train trip instead. <laughs> you know, the, the Rocky Mountain near thing. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't know. Um, we're, we, we're just kind of going back and forth with it a little bit. She's 86. Well, I recommend the train trip myself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pete and I did that. Pete, Pete and I went to visit his son in Japan a few years ago. And uh, he also had, a, he had another son who was studying in LA. So we took the train out to LA and spent some time with him and then went from there to Japan. Uh, so, so Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the train trip's wonderful. I've got a hint for you. Some friends of ours told us about a credit card you can get that's uh, partnered with Amtrak so that everything you buy gives you points on Amtrak. And when we went to Japan, we had enough points to take the train all the way out there and we slept in the cabin and the whole thing, all our meals were included. So that's a good thing to do. Who else? Oh, thank you. you bet. <laughs> yes. Michael, I'm sorry. I'm still looking at Michael Joy Stoffer. <laughs> um, I always wanted to go to the British Isles. I want to see Stonehenge and some of the other things that, you know, kind of get involved a little bit in some of the Celtic mm. things over there. I, I, I know that they maybe are German and stuff, but I think they were pretty prevalent on the British Isles as well. Mm. So th that's always something I wanted to do. Awesome. Wonderful. Who else? Rose. Hey, Pam. Um, visit family. And they're in Italy. <laughs> and <clears throat> going uh, this summer. So oh, wonderful. Get to know family better. Oh, that's wonderful. And mm -hmm. not just family, but places, other places. You know, mm -hmm. going to other countries just changes your perspective on, mm -hmm. on the world. Too. Yeah. <laughs> What about you, Charles? Got anything on your bucket list? Yeah, you'll need to unmute yourself, Charles, first. Oh, yeah, you're muted, Charles. Yeah. My, bucket, my bucket list, if I had a bucket list, would be what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already happy. I have plenty to keep me busy. Awesome. So awesome. that I don't find myself desiring to try to do something somewhere else. <laughs> well, I'm, you know, something when I looked at the picture of John behind uh, Michael there, I thought, there's a man who's happy, you know, and if you're happy with the way life is going for you, Charles, I think that's wonderful. Yeah, maybe a lot of my bucket list got covered years ago. Mm -hmm. I things that I did. There is that. Who else? Yeah, I'm kind of feeling the same way that some of my bucket list items have, have already been done about 20 years ago. A neighbor of ours had passed over and got me thinking about the idea of writing a book, which is something I wanted to do. And I felt like I had some information to share. So I took that as my sign that I really needed to just get to it and not wait until I had everything figured out. So I, I did that. I've got about 10 books written at this point. 
Mm -hmm. uh, going to certain places were were things that I wanted to do. Egypt was one of those. Got to experience that in 2016 with John and, and an amazing group of people, including Michael Joy. Uh, mm -hmm. She was there mm -hmm. with us. Um, and uh, Stonehenge was also another thing that I really wanted to do. And we got a chance to do that in 2019, uh, going a day early for what was going to be a Beatles themed tour. <laughs> so we went a day early and, and made a trip over to Stonehenge. So I was able to do that. The The only other thing that's really on that list is going to Australia at some point. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of feel like I'd like to experience that. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. By the way, I've got a hint for anybody who wants to go to Stonehenge, hasn't been there yet or wants to go back. When I, I went on, on a trip to visit the ancient spiritual sites in Great Britain with a girlfriend uh, back in 2004, and we found out that you could book a visit to Stonehenge, a private entrance, uh, if you do it in advance with the National Trust, which is like our national park system. I think it cost us each $15. Oh. So when we, when we got there, we had our entrance was at dawn on Easter Sunday, and it was also my birthday. And we got there. Of course, there was nobody there except a man at the entrance in a little box booth like thing. And so we got there and we could we could be among the stones. You can't do that anymore on, during the day, you know, normally, but we could walk among them. We could touch them. My friend Nancy said she could hear them singing. <laughs> it was it was absolutely marvelous. So I would highly recommend that if anybody is, is going to Stonehenge yet. All right. Who else? Bucket list. Who else? <clears throat> Barbara. Uh, I, I would like to do a hot air balloon. Right. What when I lived in my house on the river, I always wanted to have a balloon ride over the river mm. where I could look down and see the house. Now that it's not my house anymore, I don't know that I want to go over the river where my house was. <laughs> I'd still like to do a hot air balloon ride at some point. And I I always wanted to go to Machu Picchu. I was supposed to have gone there with my mother many years ago and the government canceled our, our tour that was planned. And we went to Portugal, Spain, and Morocco instead. And that was delightful. Oh, yeah. So I think I'm not meant to go to <laughs> Machu Picchu. But I did do Egypt a number of years back mm -hmm. in the 90s with John. And that was out of this world. And I've been to Hawaii. And mm -hmm. that was out of this world. And so I feel like now my desire to travel. Um, Lori, I'm a year older than you now. I'm 82. So my my ideas of traveling <laughs> have dwindled. Now when I travel, I would like to go to see my family. Um, my sons live in Massachusetts and in Oklahoma, and I I get there occasionally. Uh, I have a sister and a brother and nephews and nieces in California and in Texas. Um, I would like to go and see them. It's been a number of years since I've um, been there. So uh, just more family oriented now. My, my The ideas of my bucket list have changed. <laughs> as I, as, and, and where I am right now living in this residential community, there are so many activities. Yeah. I don't really want to leave where I am because I have so much going on all the time wow. here. It's, it, and the people here are just fantastic. And this having Zoom where I can, connect with all of you i'd like to come back to michigan sometime and be <laughs> come back come yeah. back go ahead michael Choi. so i um never thought of this i i was a little kid and i watched the mackinac bridge go up and it yes. wasn't until like 2006 i happened to be talking with someone who worked on the bridge for a company <laughs> that contracts to do you know they're constantly doing work on the bridge and he asked me if I had ever been to the top of the towers mm -hmm. and you know I said no I haven't and he said it's just so fantastic and he brought it up a couple of times so I went online and saw a newsreel where they went up uh, with a camera and you can actually see the curve of the earth <laughs> from oh, the top of the towers and I have height issues but that's something that it kind of put that in my mind back then that I 
I would like to go to the top of top of the towers of the Mackinac Bridge. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> I better do it pretty uh -oh. soon or I won't be able to do that last leg where you have to climb the ladder. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Uh -huh. Well, good for you. Yeah. Well, you know, we're going to shift just a little bit here. When we've been talking about bucket list, it occurred to me that it was really, there's really about two things about a bucket list uh, entry. One is that it has to be doable, but it also has to be slightly challenging, right? Or we would just do it today or, or tomorrow or whatever, right? Doable and changeable. So we're going to come back to those two things in a little bit. But right now, I'd like to talk with you about a spiritual bucket list. And of course, you know what a bucket list is. So this is this is about uh, the same thing, things you might want to do, be, or see, experience while you're still here on the earth plane, but those things of a spiritual nature. So uh, they should be challenging. They should be doable. But there are two other categories uh, here, or not categories, but um, buckets, I guess we call it. And one is for a, for a spiritual bucket list, it should it could either be something that is done and then it's over with, or is something that's ongoing. Okay, like the, for example, the done and over with might have been Barbara's trip to. Uh, to Egypt, for example, or any of us that went to Egypt. Okay, we did it. It's in the past, but it's part of our part of our human experience, right? But then there are other things that are ongoing. Like, for example, if you uh, have a meditation practice, or you want to develop a meditation practice as part of, as part of your spiritual bucket list, that's not something you do once and then you're done, right? You, it's something that keeps going. So. Um, some of the things that might be done and over with is to meet, oh, somebody was saying they wanted to meet the Dalai Lama. <laughs> okay. Um, maybe you want to become a minister. Uh, I know in the Coptics, they've offered that to a lot of people. Um, maybe you want to have your chakras aligned, which doesn't necessarily happen just once, but it would happen once and then you'd experience have that experience. It might happen another time. You might want to um, get into Reiki or Tai Chi or yoga, any of those things that you have not done yet. Um, you may want to get baptized. You want, might want to do what my girlfriends and I did when we were 13, 12 and 13. We spent a couple of months visiting different churches in our town and, and the synagogue too. In fact, my one of my girlfriends invited me to her um, bath mitzvah, which was really exciting. But I, I realized now that at 12 and 13, we wanted to see what how other people worshipped. And, and that, was, that was a real exciting thing for me. Um, you might want to attend a Native American sweat lodge. Has anybody here ever done that? I know. Yeah. All right. So... Um, or have a past life regression, which can be a very serious, I'm sorry, a very spiritual experience. Um, there are all sorts of things that you could do, and that would be an experience you would take with you to the grave, right? But then there are those things that keep on going. Um, praying every day. Mm -hmm. I have a meditation practice that that is regular every day. Um, we, I mentioned yoga, Tai Chi, Qigong, any of these practices uh, that keep on going. Um, reading spiritual literature, especially a variety coming from uh, different faith traditions. Um, if, you, if you did study Reiki at all, practice Reiki. Um, spend time in nature. That's what's the biggest, I think. And I forget to do that. Today was a beautiful day. And Michael, when you said, I hope you had a chance to get outside and enjoy that, I thought, I didn't do that except going to and from someplace. So I'm going to make up uh, make up for that another time. Uh, volunteering someplace, uh, keeping a gratitude journal. Uh, the minister at our church suggested that we do that and see how it might change our, our lives. 
And so now Pete and I sit down every night before we go to bed, we we'll write down at least three things that we that we're grateful for. Um, practice forgiveness. Um, oh, I wrote down here, Davis Daily. What's the Davis Daily? And the Davis Daily is what John always said. Mm -hmm. okay. Meditation and exercise, right? We'll never forget that. And so as I was looking at all these possible things that we could be doing on an ongoing basis, it occurred to me that when we talk about a spiritual bucket list, what we're really doing is giving, uh, giving feet to our values, our spiritual values. So, and, and I don't mean you're not spiritually oriented if you want to take a trip to Paris. I don't mean that at all. Of course, any 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 trip that we take can be spiritual spiritual if that's our intention, right? So when we look at our um, our values and what's really important in life, that can inform what might be our spiritual bucket list. If it can be a real positive way to kind of guide our steps, give you some direction. And I wanna say one other thing, cause some of you are uh, as old as I am. Some of you are older, some of you might be a little bit younger, but I have a little thing on my mirror, a little piece of post-it that I put there that I try to read every day. And it said, I'm not too old, it's not too late. And I think a spiritual bucket list, any kind of bucket list, can help us remember that it's not too late. We're not too old. Now we might be too old for some things. I'm not going to do any surfing on Lake Michigan. Like <laughs> we had some friends out there doing it yesterday, surfing <laughs> on the lake. Oh, it's cold. But I can do something else. You know, I can do something else. So thinking for a minute about spiritual bucket list, do any ideas come to mind for you? Rose, we haven't heard from you yet. Uh, okay, a spirit. I could, I could give you a minute to think about that, though, rather than <laughs> putting. <it up. laughs> you want me to? <laughs> All right. Hey, Pam? Pam. Yes, Pete. I I want to go to Mount Shasta. Tell us about that. <clears throat> well, it's a mountain in Northern California. I know John's been there. Hama Ham Bay was there too. And uh, said he saw a couple UFOs. So, come on, yeah, man. it's supposed to be an amazing sight. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. I'm, I just want to travel and with you. And, and uh, mm -hmm. I'd love to see my kids again, but they're so far away. Mm -hmm. uh, Japan, Belgium, I mean. <laughs> <clears throat> um, anyway, I hear what you're saying, though. Mm -hmm. it's, it's more of intention. Mm -hmm. what you're saying if your intent is to be uh i want to make this trip special <clears throat> so it affects me spiritually then it will i think mm -hmm. but you know uh Thank and you. i believe that everybody here has those uh <clears throat> abilities of doing a feeling that way mm -hmm. and so i i want to thank you for letting me talk <laughs> yeah, I don't always do that. I know. <laughs> what just popped up for me is that everything everything in life is spiritual because we're spiritual beings, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we may not always be thinking about that, you know, but it's there. It's always there. Right. What about you, Rose? We'll come back to you now. Um, I've always wanted to have a life regression. And that is something I feel that's very spiritual for me because I keep going back to that. There's something I need to know for now. Mm -hmm. And if anyone knows any good regressors, I would just be so happy to know about them. I do that, Rose. <gasps> Honestly? Yeah. Oh. Can, connect with me and let me, uh, let me know. We'll set up a time. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thank I would you. love to do that. My, uh, have you got something you can write with? Yes, I'm taking notes as we speak. All right, my email address is there's a couple. Let's try the big lake. One two at gmail.com. Okay. Uh, Michael? Yes. 
Oh, heck, there's a lot of places in the U.S. I haven't even seen yet. And uh, my wife, Susan, and I love baseball, and we would like to see every major league ballpark, go to mm-hmm. one game. That'd be fun and just to take the time to travel the country and see the, see the nature and That's go awesome. to the ballpark. Yeah, and it'd be fun to go to spring training, too, that's underway in, like, Florida and Arizona to check out a game. Mm-hmm. Um, we'd love to go to Italy. That was, that was brought up with Rose, I think. Um, Australia, that'd be another one, too, as far as a bucket list. Mm-hmm. That, that'd be a blast mm-hmm. um or else someplace tropical again too yeah we... indonesia maybe when <clears throat> i have a friend who's there this week is why that came Caribbean. <laughs> yeah. oh yeah there you go yeah uh who else Oops. laura joy where are you oh, I'll go. oh i'm right here hi <laughs> um actually one of the things that that i found is really amazing I've, I've been to Machu Picchu. I was able to do some archaeological work with Bowling Green University back wow. in the day. But what was so fascinating is that because it, it was such a profound experience for me that I revisit it. And every time I do, it becomes a different part of the of what I wanted to do with my with my basket. Um, because there's so many different aspects. That, like, like you like Stonehenge. There are so many standing stones and things that are there that are just amazing, too. But my bucket list is going to include a whole new um, career for me, I think, because I'm, I'm, I'm very much interested in the new technology. So plasma water commercially with a, a greenhouse is what I'm, I'm envisioning. And wow. somehow it's going to happen. I don't know how, where, why, when, whatever. I know why. <laughs> but that's another another um, aspect of what I want to do, too. How but, exciting. But what I think that the, one of the most important things is to be fully in the present. That's a bucket list person, personnel kind of a thing for each and every one of us. Because when you're in the moment, you can you can actually connect with and do more things that you might call, you know, bucket list kind of things. Mm-hmm. You're just open to the opportunity. And that's amazing. When you said you revisit Machu Picchu, you mean mm-hmm. in your mind or have you in been my in my mind? Well, and then sometimes I have different things that, that are, I call it artifacts, my, my own little like stones and things that, that I was able to bring home. Um, so by just holding that energy, it's another way of refreshing and it's another way of experiencing it differently because I'm at a different age. So I have different kinds of wisdom or different kinds of, of ideas that, that I want to incorporate or, or just connect with. When I got off the plane there, I felt like I was coming home. That's oh, all I have to say. Yeah, it was amazing. Mm, oh, yeah. wonderful! Yeah, and you wouldn't have to worry about the high altitude because you chew coca leaves. So I mean that that that's taken care of. <laughs> it's too what? She would use cocoa. Chew coca oh, leaves. Yeah. Coca leaves. Yeah. Okay, I'll think so you have to worry about the, about the altitude. <laughs> okay, uh, Lori, you were going to say something. I didn't mean to interrupt you there. <laughs> oh, it's fine. <laughs> Um, I guess this is maybe a bucket list. I, um, I'd like to get a website put together. Um, I'm thinking about calling it the Golden Light Society, but what it's going to encapsulate is all of the Course in Miracles lessons from all 365 lessons from the workbook with the, um, um, what I usually send out is emails then whoever would want to can just join that anytime they want to. They don't have to wait for me to start a new group and send out lessons every day. Mm-hmm. And then they could just do it on their own. And um, so I think a website would be a great idea for that. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. We, I well, haven't talked to Judy or Ruth or Craig yet. Do either of you want to say something? <clears throat> no? Okay. I'd, I'd like to say for my spiritual bucket list, I would like to make the connection with the universal mind, which I have still not done. I, I am meditating daily, but I still have not gotten through that veil. I want to do that. Mm-hmm. And that isn't that isn't an end thing. That that's to be a continuous thing. Right. right. And I want to be able to do astral travel. Mm-hmm. I want to be able to go to the, a lot of these places. <laughs> but spiritually um leave your body at home and the rest of you can go right exactly and i want to do that in this lifetime oh that sounds wonderful wonderful now uh do you have anybody you know who can help you with that with the astro travel well i i'm working at in alan's uh power keys <laughs> i'm 
trying to manifest these things. So we'll see how that goes. Let us know, will you? <laughs> Let us know how that goes. Well, if it if it happens, you'll definitely <laughs> you may see me. <laughs> Sounds like that's a new course I should put together. I may appear in Michigan astrally. <laughs> there you go. So I'd like to be able to do that. That because my family is scattered all over the country. <clears throat> you know, if I could do that, that would be so oh, awesome. Oh, awesome. And and I wanted to say, too, I was just at a retreat this weekend. It was the Contemporary KC of Canada. And we did a statement every day that was a KC um, reading. And it was that it is in the application, not the knowledge, that the truth becomes a part of you. Oh, could you read that again, Barbara? It's in the application, not the knowledge, mm -hmm. that the truth becomes a part of you. So a lot of us have studied and read and, and know from reading, but it's actually applying what we are studying and reading. It's in the application that it actually happens. So that's what I'm working on right now. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Barbara. And oh, that was Casey reading number 826 dash 11 for people who are KC people, you know what that means. <laughs> Barbara, a few years ago, Pete and I went to Virginia City. A Virginia Beach, yes. I'm sorry, Virginia Beach, right. And we went to the, the KC, uh, yes. what's it called? Library. Foundation. Have you been there? I I was there once, but not as a part, not as, not as an ARE person. Mm -hmm. at, at that time, I was on a, a tour that went... <laughs> to um, the world, um, oh dear, to Knoxville for, for a um, world fair. Oh, and wow. the bus stopped <clears throat> at Virginia Beach and, and also went to the, uh, right next door to the, what is the religious right um, it, to Tammy Faye Baker and-, and <laughs> Yeah. They, they're side by side. <laughs> which is funny but anyway i haven't actually gone to any of the programs at the beach except through zoom what i what amazed me there is the library is absolutely phenomenal the, as a metaphysical library yes. the only thing i've seen that it could even rival that is the one at unity village in in missouri but it it was it was just I walked around with my tongue hanging out you know i wanted to take all these books home it was just remarkable it's just amazing yeah that, that probably should be on my list to go there and, and actually attend some of the events that are there. I've gone to local events where speakers have come to Ohio and, and spoken, but and, I, and I've gone up to Livonia when speakers have been up there at, at the Unity Church there um, and to Detroit, uh, you know, I, anyway, but I haven't gone down to Virginia. <laughs> Alan, did you want to add to that? Um, I'm not nope. sure what else I can add at this point, because as far as spiritual things, I feel like I have had such a rich set of experiences there that I'm not feeling like a big need to go further, but obviously there's a lot further I can go, and I intend to spend most of the time that I will be here exploring those those new areas so um that's something that i will continue to do and yeah you can consider that a bucket list item just to to to, to re go as far as i can go whatever that happens to be thank you anybody else what? space the final frontier <laughs> Oh, I'd like to add healing, spiritual healing to my bucket list. I'd be able, like to be able to help other people. So what I would like to do uh, in closing is just to share with you some of the things that, that I found when I was looking up online about a spiritual bucket list. You'd be amazed. There are a number of things there. And there are things I, I, I wouldn't always think about. Some of them are very... Um, present for all of us, but I just like to run through this list with you. And I'd like you to think about if there are anything here that you would like to put in your spiritual bucket list. 
Learn to live in alignment with spiritual values, including forgiveness, compassion, love for others, and gratitude. Give away a part of your income to the less fortunate on a regular basis. Heal your past. Be more loving. Witness a miracle. Raise your consciousness. Learn to pray. Learn to see the good in others. Visit one of the holy sites in the world. Bring more spirituality into your everyday life. Learn to identify more with your higher self instead of identifying with the ego. And be in awe of the beauty of the earth. A rainbow, an eagle, a huge tree. Be able to answer spiritual questions such as the following. Why is there suffering in the world? Is there life after death? Why do bad things happen to good people? Are we all one? What is the meaning of life? And then here is a whole thing under the heading of a bucket list is an excellent compass. What direction do you want to take in your life? And the only reason that this came to me to talk with you about is because, well, I'm older. And as we're older, I think it's really important to have some kind of purpose or focus in your life. Because if you don't, life gets real boring. You know, it really does. So here are some ideas. Learn about different religions. Turn off your phone. <laughs> <laughs> Be a hermit for a day or more. Stargaze. Just did that. Take a forest bath. You know what that is? Forest bath. Just to go out there and let it soak into you. Uh, do some kind of creative art. Forgive yourself freely. Sleep. I've just been reading this incredible book about how to stay sharp in old age. And one of the most important things is to get right, the right amount of sleep. Because if you don't, it affects the entire body, every part of your body. Anyway, that's sleep. Find spiritual friends. I'm so glad we have this community because it's really, it really helps in your spiritual life to have other people to share your ideas and your thoughts and your challenges with them. Um, walk your foot to get grounded. I went to a, a retreat once and they, and we were all just so high, naturally high because of the retreat, but they said, okay, now we need you to take your shoes off and walk outside to get yourself grounded so you can drive home and you won't be, you know, out in the ozone level. It was winter. So we were out there walking in the snow and it worked. It got us grounded. Uh, positive affirmations. Random acts of kindness. Create a list of quotes. I have done that for years. I have a, a, a page on my computer called Wisdom. And when I see something that really resonates with me, I, I copy that and keep it for future use. Spiritual journaling. That is so, so powerful. Uh, define your values so you know which way you want to go with the, that bucket list. huh? Um, Not anywhere in particular, just a long walk. Other suggestions from you? Hi. <laughs> okay. That's all I have. Any other comments on this, Lori? I'm connecting with my daughter, right? She called me just a few minutes ago, but she's called me back at seven. Mm. She's going to teach me how to do arm exercises. Oh, that's great. Over the phone. She lives in Maryland. So um, she's going to call in a couple minutes. Oh, my. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's, what happened? Rotator cuff thing, I think. I, oh. Uh, yeah. 
No. I thought you probably had a guitar. I saw the strap. I thought you probably had a guitar. You're going to break out in song anytime. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's 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 hard to get a guitar strap on with this. I imagine. <laughs> It's also really hard to put a ponytail on, but <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, um, I just, I'm glad we had a chance to talk about this because I hope you'll think about this in the days mm -hmm. ahead and think, because I think sometimes we just, oh, it's a Tuesday. Oh, it's a Wednesday. And we just keep going through our daily stuff. And we don't always think about those things we really want to do while we have time. So I hope you'll come up with some rich ideas and enjoy that. And Charles, I hope you enjoy every day to the fullest. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. You bet. Actually, I hope that for all of you. <laughs> thank Namaste. you. Namaste. Just getting a chance to, to sing and to to even Om Chant, you've been doing that a little bit lately, and it's, it's part of the spiritual bucket list, and Alan recorded me chanting recently, so that's kind of one to check off the, the bucket list box, so it'll be available for folks, and mm. did a little recording for Laura Joy recently, too, for a friend, so it nice. uh, gets you thinking about even walking in nature. I'm glad you brought up that list at the end of the, the presentation tonight, just to, just to what do you call it? To, to bathe in it? Bathe in nature? Uh, forest bath. Forest bath, yeah. yeah. It's a thing. It's a thing. <laughs> I'm understanding more and more that purpose of grounding and walking in the forest is something that is grounding. And someone said not long ago, if you just like where we live, it's not so easy. If you just go put your hand for five, 10 seconds on a tree, you'll yeah. get the energy yeah. exchange. Yeah. I want to show you all something because this is part of my joy. Um, that's Lake Michigan. Oh, oh lovely. That's you beautiful. Tonight. Oh, yeah. You don't, you don't have to go to Timbuktu, but you can find the beauty around you, right? Yes. <laughs> I have found three native plants that come and bloom in February since I've lived here now in the last week. Um, blossoms of aconite, of the Lenten rose, and of the um, woodland crocus, all of which I've never seen before wow. um, because I've gone out into the woods in the last week. Mm -hmm. And so this is one of those things that I started to do that I didn't take time to do before. Mm -hmm. And it's wonderful. Right. You get you get an A plus for this. Okay. <laughs> the, your bucket lists are are not bucket to me is future list. All mm -hmm. those things are things to be doing today, every day, not not in the future. That's the the doing part of it, as opposed to that, the done part. Right? Exactly. <laughs> that is. Mm -hmm. So what applying you applying know? this, not not just knowing that we should. <laughs> What do you think if we don't um, complete our bucket list, do we have to come back so we can complete it? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Good question. <laughs> Everything is eternal. It'll be waiting for you. All right. Sounds good to me. Very good. Thank you, Pam. Great presentation. And thank you all for gathering tonight. And blessings, Pam, and uh, to all of you. And Looking Bless forward to seeing you uh, virtually or, or in person at, at John's Memorial on Saturday as we have a heartfelt afternoon together. Mm -hmm. Okay. I wanted to thank you all, too, be, because it's with support of people like you that I've be, been doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Spiritual growth has immensely improved since reconnecting through Zoom. <laughs> it was posted. <clears throat> thank, thank you. Thank you. And blessings to all of you. Blessings. Blessings. Bye-bye. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.